Is democracy a good idea? Well, here's Churchill. Many forms of government have been tried and will be tried in this world of sin and woe. No one pretends that democracy is perfect or all-wise. Indeed, it has been said that democracy is the worst form of government, except for all those other forms that have been tried from time to time. He said that in 1947. Uh, you know, was he right or not? I look at both possible answers to that uh, vital question. <clears throat> First of all, let's uh, talk about the Yes Group, uh, who uh, think that uh, it really is the best way to go. Uh, well, they would first of all point out that in democracies, people have the choice, they have the option, not only of choosing the leader, but of kicking him out uh, when he is seen to fail, uh, as has happened both in Britain and in the USA. Uh, democracies are more economically successful because under uh, dem undemocratic political systems, they tend to limit markets and favor monopolies at the expense of the rough and tumble of capitalist competition, which is necessary for sustained economic growth. Uh, democracies never have famines. They seldom go to war with one another. Uh, they rarely murder their own populations. This happens a lot in... Uh, dodgier forms of government. Uh, nearly always, uh, they nearly always have peaceful transitions of government and they tend to respect human rights a lot more consistently than other regimes do. Uh, and when there's a change to a repressive form of government, uh, often the smartest, most ambitious, most successful people leave. Uh, the continuing problem of the brain drain hobbles these countries. That certainly happened in the past to Iran, to China, and to Cuba. Even in those nations where exit is not allowed, and that's a hallmark of really repress repressive regimes, you can't leave, uh, many people will risk their lives to leave because it's so awful, as happened with the boat people in Cuba, with the East Germans in their desperate and dangerous dash, uh, across the wall and the Chinese swimming to Hong Kong. Uh, finally, the most important and most obvious point is that truly democratic governments run more prosperous nations, while those that are really autocratic and repressive uh, eventually fail, as is now happening, for example, in North Korea. Well, what about those who would say, no, democracy is not necessarily the best way to go. There are a lot of problems with it. Uh, well, uh, they tend to line up their arguments along both examples of repressive regimes that haven't done too badly and democratic regimes that have made a mess of things. <laughs> so let's have some of those. Uh, in the latter category, uh, that is, democratic regimes that have made a mess of things. Both America under Trump and Britain under Johnson illustrate how popular appeal and the skills of the demagogue or personality cultist can both deceive the public but also leave the country in difficulty. Uh, it's far better to select leaders by an elite chosen few. Those who know what the job requires understand the character of the people involved uh, this was done in the past by the electors of the Holy Roman Empire, and that certainly went on for a long time. The Soviet Union worked the same way with the Supreme Soviet. They threw out Khrush Khrushchev when it was clear that he was no longer up to the job. You might say that they failed, but not after quite a long run. The vast majority of people, those who vote in elections, are ignorant, stupid, and self-serving, and liable to select a leader in their own image, as they did in the case of Donald Trump. Uh, also, uh, democracy is clearly inefficient. That's because of the irrational voter, uh, one who makes decisions without all of the facts uh, or necessary information in order to make a truly informed decision. One would think it should work that way, but it simply doesn't. Uh, also, uh, democracy slows down processes because of the amount of input and participation needed in order to go forward with the decision. Apparently, Chairman Xi of China warned Biden about this. He said it just takes too long and you don't have the time. Interesting point. 
and uh, democracy doesn't always provide enough political stability as uh, governments are frequently elected on and off there tend to be frequent changes in policies uh, both domestically and internationally so uh, while the evidence is not conclusive one way or another the examples cited show that uh, some uh, regimes that are repressive do not too badly, while functioning democracies can make a mess of things. So, there we are, the jury is out. Well, what's my take on all of this? It is a pretty important question after all, so let's see if we can <laughs> make some sense of it. Uh, well, to me, it's pretty clear from history that democratic governance outpaces repressive governments by a long way and by all economic and political measures. And it respects the consent of the government, which makes democracies more pleasant places in which to live. Uh, we shouldn't overlook that. That is really a key consideration. But the caveat is that when selecting leaders in democratic countries, beware of the demagogue and the incompetent dressed up as a great leader. We selected for a leader in Britain a man who is bright, charming, and articulate, but a liar and an incompetent. The same lesson can be learned from the entire Trump debacle. So, those are the dangers. Be aware of them and soldier on. <laughs> also, let me say that I am beguiled by Plato's idea of philosopher kings, essentially ruled by the wisest. But it will never happen there aren't any. Sorry. Well, hope you liked that. Uh, and in any case, uh, please subscribe. And uh, while you're at it, take a look at a couple of other similar videos. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.